When you think of a compact crossover SUV, one of the first cars that come to mind is the Honda CR-V. First introduced in 1995, the CR-V is largely responsible for making crossover SUVs a mainstream choice in the Philippine car market. Today, compact crossover SUVs are lording it all over our streets, and we have the Honda CR-V to thank for that. So how do you make such a popular SUV even more pleasing to buyers. Well, we have this Honda CRV SX All Wheel Drive, but this is not just any ordinary CRV SX All Wheel Drive. This is the seven seater diesel variant. And today we are going to go around the car, we're going to review it, and then I'm going to take her out for a short drive just to see how this car feels on the road. So let's do this. Now before I begin with this car review, I'd like to extend a special shout out and thank you to Honda Green Hills. I am shooting this car review right now on location at their dealership and if you have a requirement for a Honda and you are within the vicinity, pay them a visit and experience their warm hospitality. Now let's get on with the review. Starting off with the looks, the current generation CRV is unmistakably a CRV. The design language of this car is more like an evolution rather than a revolution from its previous generations. We have Honda's penchant for using a lot of chrome on their lineup and that could also be found in the CRV. We have this chrome strip found underneath the headlights which extends all the way up to the top half of the front grille. We have the chrome dot. Uh, emblem of Honda right here but it is quite stylish looking and it's a little bit restrained because we have the bottom half of the front grille sporting uh, glossy black plastic instead of chrome and it has this nice looking honeycomb finish on the bottom half of the grille and at the lower half of the front bumper. Now if you will look at the headlights of the CRV, it also sports the same full array of LED lights that could be found in the Honda Civic and I love this look of it. Some people might say it looks a little bit busy for a headlight but personally I find it to look so modern and futuristic. And aside from that full LED headlights, we also have the daytime running lights at the bottom part. And moving to the lower part of the bumper, we have a full LED fog light as well. Now the overall fascia of the Honda CRV is redesigned to sport a more muscular and aggressive look. And Honda did that by adding some lines and creases right here at the side of the bumper, which gives it more like a jutting out chin look and makes it more aggressive. Now moving to the side of the CRV, you will note that the chrome treatment extends all the way down to the side. We have this chrome strip that can be found embedded in the black plastic cladding at the lower half of the CRV. In terms of the plastic cladding, Honda has decided to keep it to a little bit of a minimum. The black plastic cladding is just a small part here at the side and in the front of the bumper. It's, it's quite good looking and it doesn't look as big as some of the other compact crossover SUVs that are in the market now or even the first generation CRV which had black plastic cladding that extended all the way up to the half of the door. So this would still do a good job in protecting your CRV from road debris, from rocks, from sand in case you decide to take your CRV out for a little bit of light off-roading or if you are driving in the usual conditions of Manila roads. <laughs> now for the wheels, we have here a set of 18 inch wheels in this nice looking Beyblade type uh, design. For those of you who don't know what a Beyblade is, it's like these little uh, tops that, spinning tops that kids play with nowadays. It comes in all kinds of designs and this looks exactly like a Beyblade at least to me. It comes in a two-tone finish. You got your gloss black finish and a silver trim as well, all given the diamond cut treatment, making it a very handsome looking wheel. Now, the only thing that I would have loved to see in the, at least in the top of the line CRV, would have been a set of 19 inch wheels, but for the Philippine market, we get 18 inch wheels instead. It's still good looking though. Now for the tires, these are Michelin tires that are in a 23560 R18 size. So these are pretty standard crossover SUV tires for you. 
Moving on to the rear part of the CRV, you could see that Honda also didn't scrimp, at least on the design and the materials used for the rear part and the taillights would be a great example for that. The taillights are a full LED taillights already, no bulbs found here. And you've got this nice design that goes all the way up to the top part of the CRV. Now this taillight design is quite modern, futuristic, but it also reminds me of some of the older taillight designs of Volvo, although here in the CRV it is beautifully executed as well. We have here the usual chrome again. We have another chrome finish here at the, at the back. You have a chrome strip up here on the top with a chromed out Honda emblem. And we have here a sticker that could be found on all of these all-wheel drive SX CRV models in the Philippines and the sticker says seven seater diesel turbo just in case you have any doubts that the CRV that you're looking at is a seven seater and not a five seater. Now going down here we have the usual rear view camera as well. The rear view camera is a multi-view camera which is quite useful for its purpose and we have the usual black cladding found here at the bottom part of the CRV. Now unlike the other CRV models found in other markets like in the US which has dual tailpipes, this top of the line SX all wheel drive in the Philippines doesn't come with a dual tailpipe. Instead, it just has your usual regular tailpipe which is hidden from view. Now opening the trunk, you will see that it is a power liftgate trunk. It opens quite slowly, but it does the job. It's the only CRV in the Philippine market that has a power liftgate as well. Now that we're inside, let's take a look at what's inside more. And let me light it up so that you guys could see a little bit better inside the trunk. All right, guys, so now I have the trunk area lit up for you. And you can see that this is a seven-seater SUV. And with the third row up, you just have a tiny space at the back of the third row where you could just park a couple of duffel bags. It's not enough for luggage and all that. So if you're going to take luggage with you, you'll have to tumble down the third row and that would give you 472 liters of trunk space. Now to tumble down the third row, there is a tag here. It's like a piece of rope that you just pull up and you can tumble it down. So that should give you 472 liters of trunk space. And in case you need more space than 472 liters, you could also tumble down the second row using the same straps that could be found at the top of the seats. And that would give you around 960 liters of trunk space. Now with 960 liters of trunk space, that's enough to fit a washing machine or a cabinet or maybe even a Honda Jazz inside your CRV. Still at the back of the CRV, I find another interesting feature about this car. You see the floor of this tiny trunk space when the third row is up has a strap that would make you think that there is another storage found under this floor. But as you lift it, you will see that it's still another floor. There is no storage that can be found here underneath this false or fake floor that we have here. Instead, there is another strap or a string that you will use to lift. And when you lift it, you will now see that underneath that second floorboard, we have the full-size spare tire found under this area now this is a full-size spare tire so you'd be wondering how would i get this out given that there is a third row seat that is blocking the way now you what you have to do is you have to get this strap right here and you'll have to use all your might and your strength to lift this up and latch it onto the second row seat which will now give you a full access to the spare tire. Now I've tried lifting it up and it is quite heavy and I'm not a weak person. So good luck trying to get to your spare tire if ever you have a flat, if you're driving the seven-seater CRV. <laughs> Moving on to the engine, the seven-seater Honda CRV sports a diesel engine. Now if Honda has its iVTEC engine for its petrol cars, this one is called the iDTEC, where D stands for diesel. Now, this 
Honda CRV diesel is the first diesel car that Honda brought into the Philippines and it has been received with much anticipation. This is the same diesel engine that could be found in the diesel Civics that are being offered already in Europe. In terms of displacement, it's a 1.6 liter turbo diesel engine with a common rail injection system. Now, if you think that the displacement is a little bit on the small side, fret not, this diesel engine still has 300 newton meters of torque. And that means that it could still haul ass even when it's fully loaded with the kids and even with your mother-in-law. Now, in terms of horsepower, don't expect too much from this diesel engine. It only has 120 horsepower, so you wouldn't be breaking any speed records when it comes to this diesel CRV. Now we go inside the driver's side of the CRV, and you will see upon entering, you will note that it has an eight way power driver's seat with lumbar support, which is pretty good. And when you go to the passenger side, you will know that it has a manual passenger seat control so we only have the power seats in the driver's side we don't have power seats in the passenger side so for the passenger side you'll have to use manual labor to adjust your own seats now looking at the seat quality you will note that it is made of black leather and it's very nice it has a perforated finish here in the middle with nice stitching and the, I, love, I love the design it looks quite sporty as well and the quality of the leather is quite good now let's get inside the driver's seat just to see how the driver's seat feels and take a look inside the interior of the crv all right so sitting on the driver's seat of the honda crv sx all-wheel drive the first thing you'll notice is that you have this huge panoramic sunroof above me and this is a welcome accessory that can be only found in the top of the line variant crv in the philippines this gives the cabin a more spacious airy look to it and it brightens up the inside of your cabin as well you could easily close the the top quite easily like that just a press of a button and if you want to open the entire thing you just have to also press another button and you now have a regular opening sunroof right here it doesn't extend all the way to the back because well where, where will you put the glass if it goes all the way to the back moving to the gauges of the CRV I love how Honda is not afraid to leave the traditional instrument gauges route and instead go for their own fully digital panel you have your fuel right here you have your engine temperature right there and right in the middle you have your uh, tachometer arc arcing at the top part of the instrument gauges and you have your digital speedometer in the middle and you have a ton of information that you could just toggle through you know how much fuel you have you know well, uh, your uh, trip meter and all that stuff and your navigation or if you want to go out for coffee and your all-wheel drive system as well so Honda's uh, interpretation of the instrument gauges is a big thumbs up for me this is a fantastic way to do things now for the steering wheel you will note that the steering wheel is in full leather with a good material and good stitching as well and you have your touch uh, sensitive you know, control buttons here you have for volume control you just have to if you notice here you'll have to just like finger it slightly to make the volume go up or go down takes some getting used to as well it's not really an actual button but more like a touch sensitive button you've got the usual controls for your bluetooth you got your controls for your act honda sensing technology here for lane departure for all the radar and all that stuff the infotainment screen is a seven inch affair it's not really that big but it is quite uh, legible it's quite clear in terms of looking at it you got your home you got your maps right here this is a touch screen as well but we've got a lot of uh, space to be found at the side which could have been nicer if they extended the entire screen to cover this space as well but as it is at seven inches it's not really the biggest but at least it is quite decent and easily readable if you, you also look here you also have this uh, volume and uh, power button right here this is quite good that Honda added this because it's kind of hard to 
fiddle around with your touchscreen while you're driving and if you really just want to adjust your volume or turn off your radio or turn it on it's hard to look for it in a touchscreen menu now if you notice we also have a dual zone climate control and this is an intelligent climate control because we have a button here called climate and if you press that look what happens to your infotainment screen you can also adjust your aircon controls here on the screen or you can do it with physical buttons here at the bottom so that is a decent and a good um, interpretation of the info infotainment screen now going down further you will notice one of the biggest fun fact of the crv and that's the fact that it doesn't have a shift knob looking at this entire area you don't see any shift knobs at all and that was the first thing that surprised me when i got inside the crv instead of the shift knobs you have these shift buttons you got your park button here a reversing button neutral and your drive with a sport uh, button as well so i figured that this one you press it once for drive you press it again for sport and you press again if you just want to leave your drive so this would take some getting used to especially if you've never seen or driven a car with no shifter at all whether it's manual or automatic this by the way is a nine speed automatic transmission so kudos to honda for that for giving us a nine speed automatic in their top of the line crv sx all-wheel drive this is not a cvt and this would make better use of all that torque all 300 newton meters of torque that can be found in this diesel engine now beside this shifterless shift knob is this electronic parking brake right here it also has a brake hold feature which is quite a convenience and you got an eco button right here which helps you be more fuel efficient even if you're already driving a diesel which is already fuel efficient in itself this will make you more fuel efficient with that eco button on going down from the shifting area couldn't really call it a shift knob anymore so shifting area we have a lot of storage found in the center uh, stack of the crv you've got a storage right here it's quite big you got your 12 volt power outlet as well for your radar uh, detectors and all that stuff you got a couple of cup holders here and you also have another tray here where you can park your smartphone whatever and if you if this space is not enough you can open it and inside you will find another 12 volt charger and a couple of usb ports and even an hdmi port so honda decided to like throw in all the ports that you would need and all the charging out that you would need in this crv okay and you have the usual armrest right there center armrest which if you want to open it you will see a cavernous uh, storage right in the middle and that should store some of your bigger items like cameras and stuff the crv also comes with a reversing camera that can be found in the infotainment screen so if we just press the reverse button i still have to get used to saying those things i mean pressing a park button or a reverse button or a hard drive button so if we press the reverse button right here which is a toggle going down you press it and you will now have a view of your rear view camera and it shows you also your uh, parking sensor so aside from the rear view camera you've got your parking sensors as well just to make sure that you don't back up into something you've got a multi-view rear view camera here uh, you can see down way down below you can see a little bit uh, midway and you can see a little bit wider with this with this view so it's not an around view camera or a 360 degree view camera but it's a rear view camera that is quite usable with parking sensors all right so now let's take a look at the second row of the crv just to see how your passengers would feel about riding inside your crv so going inside you'll notice that this is where honda truly shines because we've got a class leading leg room right here in the crv the front seat is adjusted for somebody of my height i'm five foot six as you can see i have a ton of leg room i could even i could even slouch down like this in the second row and feel so comfortable and relaxed and there's still a ton of space in front of me now aside from that awesome leg room the second row passengers also get their own climate control vents right here and you've got us 
couple of USB charging ports as well. So Honda thought about the charging requirements of the families that would ride in the CRV. You've got several, like four charging outlets up front and you've got two at the back. And that is an awesome way of catering to the needs of your clients. All right, so I'm at the third row of the CRV. And the second row has been pushed forward quite well, all the way as far as it could go. And that kind of scrimps on the leg room of the second row passengers. So you got a little bit of leg room left, but it's, uh, it's not so bad. Now here in the third row with the second row pushed all the way up forward, the, the third row is quite comfortable. I've seen reports where they're saying that this is a cramped space. Now I'm five foot six, and even if I'm five foot six, uh, I find that this is quite a comfortable place to be in, although my knees are a little bit uh, nearly towards my chest, but there's still some leg room that can be found. So the third row is quite cramped given the fact that the CRV, the seven-seater CRV is riding on the same wheelbase as the five-seater CRV. So there's really no increase in interior space for this vehicle. So this would actually do uh, in, 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 you know, in times of a crunch where you have to ferry more passengers than, uh, than five people, you could use the third row in a pinch and it would be perfectly all right as long as it's not a long road trip. It's, if it's a short trip, around less than an hour, it's quite comfortable, it's okay. It doesn't feel claustrophobic and I love the fact that there are also air vents to be found here at the back. So your third row passengers won't be you know, warm. They won't be uncomfortable at the back given that you've got four air vents with its own independent controller as well here. So Honda didn't just put in an another two extra seats at the back and call it a day. Instead, they thought about how the third row passengers would feel riding at the back of the CRV and you got your your safety belts you got your cup holders and you got your air vents to make this least favorite seating position to be you know quite uh quite endurable if you're above five foot six i would not ask you to stay here unless i want to torture you so if you're five six and below or if you're a kid the third row is pretty decent space so now that we've gone around the car and I've shown you all of its features, it's now time to take her out for a drive just to see how it feels on the road. So let's go for that drive right now. Okay, so we're now behind the wheel of the CRV, and one of the things that any regular driver will have to get used to is the fact that it doesn't have a shift knob. I mean, I've shown you that this is just a bunch of buttons for the park, reverse, neutral and drive and now that I've, I'm taking her out for a drive <laughs> I find it's kind of difficult getting adjusted to a car with no shift knob forward visibility is pretty good something you'd expect from all CRVs you got a good tall riding position you have a good command of the road it is very decent now acceleration wise it's okay. It's not seat in your pants type of acceleration, although it's a diesel with 300 newton meters of torque and it's not a CVT. That's right, you heard me everybody as I mentioned in the interior segment of my review. This is not a C CVT. This is a 9-speed automatic transmission and that makes good use of all the torque of this diesel engine as well. So kudos to Honda for giving the CRV a 9-speed automatic transmission and paddle shifters at the same time. So you can go into sport mode if you like. We'll try sport mode now. You'll know you're in sport mode by seeing the S on your dashboard, on your instrument panel. And yes, in sport mode, it has more grunt in it. By pressing on the paddle shifters, you can go straight into manual mode. Yes. And it is quite responsive. I mean, I've seen some reviews saying that sport mode isn't that responsive. Well, guess what? It is responsive and your paddle shifters, there's really no delay. Let's try downshifting. 
downshifting now there is no delay at all and you could really use the entire rev range of this diesel engine all the way up to the red line of 4500 rpm in terms of seats normally my biggest gripe when it comes to hondas is the seat quality because honda really kind of scrimps on the comfort of their seats it's mostly just thin material but that's not what we have here in the crv these leather seats are quite supportive, they cushion well, and they have a good lumbar support as well, which helps with the back when it comes to your regular long drive. So you'll be quite comfortable in the CRV in these seats. So I've been driving the CRV for like five minutes now, and I'm now starting to get the hang of the shifterless, shift knobless uh, setup we have here it just needs a little bit of uh, training at least for the first few minutes but then you get the hang of it and it becomes second nature already and i love how honda went with it you know the dashboard is a lot more futuristic without the shift knob and you know that you are in a modern current generation crv in terms of suspension the crv is not floaty and i like it 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 still has that sporty vibe to it it's a little bit firm but not jarring not bumpy not bouncy as well and you don't feel like you're piloting a boat so that's pretty good now for the nvh levels of the crv diesel since it's a diesel vehicle you'd also want to know if it's a noisy car well one thing that i, I find is that it's not as noisy as some of the older diesels but you still know you are in a diesel engine vehicle especially when accelerating you could hear that diesel rattle while you're accelerating but while you're cruising like what i'm doing now you can't hear anything it feels like you're driving a petrol engine crv the thing about having a nine speed automatic in a crv or in any suv it's not about having a sporty uh, vehicle rather it's more of having a more fuel efficient vehicle because as you go up to a higher gear you have a lower uh, rev level rpm level and that would make your car more fuel efficient now in terms of fuel efficiency the diesel crv is a quite a fuel efficient car for heavy city use you would see around 10 kilometers per liter and when i say heavy city use that's manila traffic for you now for highway driving you can go as much as 24 to 25 kilometers per liter so that is quite a fuel efficient SUV for you. So there you have it. That is the Honda CRV SX all wheel drive seven seater diesel variant in the Philippines. This is the top of the line model that's, that can be found here in the Philippines. So going back to my original question, how do you make a popular SUV even more pleasing to its buyers? Well, throw in a third row, making it a seven seater give it that honda sensing suite of safety features and put in a powerful and responsive diesel engine as well and you have yourself a winner in the crv now how much does this top of the line crv go for this one retails for 2,138,000 pesos and for that sum of money you get all the bells and whistles you get all the safety features and you get a car that doesn't have a shift knob but at least it's still a nine-speed automatic transmission once again thank you for watching one of my car reviews if you like this video hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well and send me some comments uh, below tell me what do you think about this diesel powered crv do you have it in your market do you want to have it in your market and well comment whatever you like in the comments below my name is ray gan and i'll see you again in the next video bye bye